We did provide handouts that have some of the <clears throat> information that on uh, written down for you. Uh, but I'll give you some additional stuff uh, as far as updates on our investigation as of this afternoon. Um, the investigation is obviously ongoing. It's going to be ongoing for quite a long time, uh, but we are making some progress. Uh, for instance, today, we've, this afternoon, we started a process to try to start getting vehicles back to people who had their vehicles that are within that crime scene area. And so as they clear certain areas of the park and they make those vehicles available, uh, there's a process where people are being reunited with their vehicles by getting escorted in. Uh, and so that's a, that's a positive for folks that have lost their, their vehicles into the, into the park. Um, I told you yesterday afternoon at the press conference that we were executing a search warrant on the suspect's car that we found parked just northeast of the park. Um, that has been completed, and I know I, some of the reports included that uh, this gentleman had purchased uh, the weapon that was used in the shooting, and he had also purchased a shotgun, so we knew that he was associated with uh, those two weapons. During the search warrant of the car, the shotgun that he had purchased uh, was located, so we've now accounted for both of the weapons that we knew that he had purchased uh, recently. Um, also, we, I was asked a question yesterday regarding uh, a bag uh, of ammunition or a bag in the creek. And yesterday we had a very large number of people from uh, the Santa Clara County Search and Rescue Sheriff's deputies and the FBI that did a sweep of the creek, a very detailed uh, sweep of the creek from one end to the other. And I can confirm that they have, they did locate a bag. Uh, that had additional ammunition in it uh, in the creek area when they were doing that sweep. I want to talk a little bit about, because we keep uh, mentioning that we believe there may be a second subject involved, but we weren't sure at what level that person uh, person's involvement was. We have no indication that he was actually a shooter but we had several people that thought that he was with another person. Uh, that investigation into that piece of this has been a high priority for us because we want to put the community in people's minds at ease as to whether or not there's actually another person out there that they need to be worried about. Uh, our investigation is leading us more and more to believe that there was not a second person involved. Uh, I don't think I could say that with absolute certainty at this point because we're still following up leads because people who say I saw this or I saw that, uh, we want to follow every single one of those leads all the way through. Uh, but we have been able to track his movements around town leading up to the incident, uh, including multiple different uh, stores and locations that he visited prior to uh, engaging in this uh, shooting incident. And in every single one of those uh, cases, we've been able to retrieve video, uh, and he was by himself. He was not with anybody else. So that is sort of supporting the thought now that, uh, that he acted on his own. But again, I don't want to dissuade any witnesses or any people that saw things or have any information from continuing to come forward. <laughs> Uh, because we don't want to rule that out as at least a possibility until we've exhausted every single lead that is provided to us. <clears throat> I think that uh, that's really all the updates that I have for you. I, you know, I. I would continue to ask for the community's patience because this is a long process. I, uh, you know, that crime scene area is acres and acres. And so I know it's inconvenient for some folks. I also want to encourage witnesses to continue to come forward, to continue to visit the website uh, that is set up for downloading photographs and video. Uh, in any, any information that somebody has, no matter how irrelevant or it may seem could potentially be very, very important. And so we want to continue uh, to encourage people to call in. And I know there's more people uh, that I'm sure saw things that uh, are watching this. Please, please continue to do that. 
and that's uh, that's what I have as your update for this afternoon. I, I'm going to turn it over so we can get a little bit more of an update as to personal effects and the evidence collection process going out at the park. <clears throat> you have video of them, you're tracking them now at this point. What was he up to? You know, I don't, I don't have a lot of specific details, but he went shopping at a number of stores in town. I, I could not tell you what he was, I don't have that level of detail what he was purchasing, but you know, most stores now have video. And so uh, the investigators have been able to retrace, you know, back, they've been going back from the time of the incident. And they have him in several of our local stores uh, on video. Do you think he was buying things for this event? I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, we saw results from the uh, the search warrant that was executed at the Nevada apartment that he had been living in that showed that um, some of the things that they seized were empty shotgun and rifle boxes, a gas mask, empty ammunition boxes, I think a bulletproof vest, some electronic devices. Do we have a sense at this point if um, how like premeditated and well planned this was, or if he was potentially um, planning something in addition to this as well? I don't know that I'm really prepared to comment on that because I don't have enough of the detail. It certainly seems to me that it was pre-planned, um, but how long and how widespread and whether there was any additional component of the plan, I, I just don't know at this point. So what about if you are undocumented and you want to share photos or uh, videos to the law enforcement and you are you know, worried about your personal information being shared later on? or uh, as far as immigration status related to being a witness, you know, I try to work very hard in our community to uh, put our community at ease about that. Um, we don't ask somebody what their immigration status is. We're not really concerned about that. That's, that's a federal function and we're a police department and we're investigating a crime. Um, and I certainly would hope, I think if you were to talk to anybody in our community here in Gilroy uh, that we've worked with, that they could tell you that uh, we're, we're good to work with and, and that they should not be concerned about that. Special so, Agent Fair, can I ask you a question? You were asking yesterday for people to offer up some pictures they, they have taken at the fair and also if they have any information to share with you. Have you gotten anything yet or are they any useful hints or leads? Uh, we have. We had, we've had a number of submissions, both video and still. I have not seen them and I have not received the analysis of those just yet. Is there any Over, reason the to believe he may have been targeting minorities? Uh, we have no reason to believe at this point that he was targeting uh, any protected characteristics of, or any class. With, with no preliminary motive and the suspect deceased, how difficult will it be to determine an actual motive? Uh, well, I think this, that that is going to depend on a number of things. Um, principally, a uh, review of digital media historically has been very revealing in terms of somebody's uh, mindset, ideological beliefs, intentions. Um, we've got to we've got to get into the computers, the towers, the thumb drives, the phone to get a holistic picture of of him who he, who he was in touch with what sentiments and thoughts he shared with others or he's cataloged for, for his own consumption. How long would that be? Um, the answer to that is it depends, right? It, it depends on how quickly we can get into the phone. It also depends on how um, the ease with which we can enter into any of the other digital media. Is there an early indication of what the motive might be? There is no early indication at this point. Are you linked with the Instagram account specifically? Um, I. I, I can't comment on that because I don't know the answer. The presumption is yes, I understand what you're asking, but I don't have an affirmative answer to that. Go ahead. Chief, the three Questions. police officers who the three police officers who confronted the, the shooter, how are they doing? The second question is, has it been determined that they were the only three officers who fired shots? I I do believe that it was only the th initial three officers that engaged the suspect when this occurred. Um, you know, I placed them on administrative leave. I, I, I just did not want to put them in a position of having to come back to work and, and deal with all of this. I, you know, I think it's a very emotional thing for them. It's, it's one thing to be involved in the shooting, but then they were also in the middle of the carnage of the people that were shot and then immediately went into 
you know, the rendering aid mode. And those two things combined, I think, uh, for anybody is a very difficult thing to go through. <coughs> Is there any, hold on just a second. Go, go ahead. Chief, in relation to California AB 748, have you seen that particular evidence and uh, or do you plan on meeting the requirement related to that? Yeah, you know, as far as the release of video, um, that's a new California state law. And we, I had one brief conversation about that this morning. I, and I'm going to have to really look into how we're going to be able to meet that because the volume, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm assuming the volume of video is gonna be significant. And the video that we've released previously uh, to uh, California Public Records Act requests has required us to go through and redact uninvolved parties out. Uh, and quite frankly, for a department our size, I don't know how we're gonna do that yet. Have you seen the video? I have, I have personally not seen any of the video, no. Can you, just, can you describe as maybe somebody who has? I mean, obviously, you had a lot of heroes out there that day that's going to gonna back a lot of that information up. Is that right? I, I suspect that the video is going to give us, yeah, I, I believe. Uh, Were these undercover officers that were involved? The, the three officers that were involved were fully uniformed officers. They were on one of the, what we call a rogue team, uh, whose responsibility is to rogue a certain area of the park to, to deal with any issues that come up. Yes. Will you be releasing the names of those officers? And are, are they veteran officers, rookie officers? And then my second question, um, you said the suspect visited local stores. Are you talking about like downtown Gilroy? <laughs> No, I I think uh, I think it was more the big box stores, um, but I don't I don't have a list. I just heard that they tracked them, so I don't I couldn't tell you what stores. But my impression was that it was local big box stores. And the officers, veteran officers. I'm sorry, the, they are all veteran officers. Um, and the question, as far as releasing their name. Um, you know, I probably will do that. I haven't decided when we would do that. I would really prefer to look after the best interest of those officers and get them the help that they need and then make that decision. But I would expect that we will release their names. Is there any reason to believe that any of the victims may have been hit by police gunfire? There is no indication of that at this point. Um, in the I mean, obviously, that's something that I was concerned about, that I thought about. Um, and at this point, there's nothing in the investigation that leads me to believe that that's the case. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Question for the FBI. Agent. So this is the same tool, this website that you used in the Boston Marathon bombing, the Las Vegas shooting. Can you talk a little bit about what you expect to receive from the public and what you actually do with that information that you ingest? Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks, Josh. Um, uh, the tool originated um, just subsequent to the Boston bombing because of the volume of videos and stills that came in. We're talking in the hundreds of thousands. So we needed a tool to process that information. That will go back to um, our FBI headquarters where it will be co-located. Um, it will be analyzed by teams of analysts and agents back at our headquarters um, to try to pull together some mosaic to give us an accurate appraisal of um, what might have happened, the time flow, the people flow. Um, show how the shooter came in and how he moved throughout the crowd and, and provide other, other evidence, video documentation. Any indication he was on 4chan or 8chan before <coughs> or the shooting? I don't have that information. Go ahead. Speaking of movement, can you clarify where the suspect entered the festival and his movements during the uh, shooting? Oh, I'll leave that. So I, I have not personally been out there, so I'm, I'm going based off of uh, briefings that I get. I, but it sounds like the movement would have involved, his car was located northeast of the festival grounds. Uh, and it sounds, or it seems reasonable that what he did was moved up through that creek, which is pretty heavily wooded. There's also running water in it. Um, and made it uh, down to a fence line because the entire festival grounds was fenced in except for the uh, egress and points uh, into the festival. Uh, and then some used some tool, I don't know what tool, uh, to cut a hole in the fence and that's how he gained access into the festival grounds. Um, 
you mentioned that a shotgun was recovered from the car that was searched. Was anything, any other key pieces of evidence recovered from there? And then the house on Churchill here in Gilroy that was searched yesterday, was anything of significance recovered from there? Yeah, as far as, the, well, the search warrant on Churchill, I do not know. I haven't gotten a briefing on what they recovered from there. Um, in the car, the only thing that I was concerned about was the shotgun, which is what they gave me. And so I don't know if there was anything else relevant to, to them that was taken out of that either yet. Can you comment on the status of the people who were injured? Uh, have they been released from the hospital or what's their status? As far as, far as the victims, I, I don't have a current status. Uh, I was given a status earlier, actually this morning. Uh, that several people had been released. Some people were still in the hospital. And I I don't know the number, but there was someone that was still in very serious condition, maybe more than Anyone one. Anyone critical? I don't know. So do, do, do you know how much ammunition the suspect had with him? How many shots may have been fired? Did he have any other kind of tactical gear with him? I do not know that at this point. Let me, I, I want to close because I, I need to get going, but uh, just for the press, for all of you, I've gotten requests from probably just about every news agency in the country for, can you do this? Can you do an interview? Can you? And um, and I want you all to know that I'm not I'm not not doing those because I don't want to. Um, but as you can imagine, we have so many people and so many things going on uh, that I'm being pulled in a lot of different directions which is part of the reason why when you ask me very detailed questions, I'm not at that level. I don't have that level of detail because we're doing so many different things. Um, I'm expecting over the next day or two or three that my role for that will start to decrease a little bit. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to free up some time. And if I can free up some time, I'm gonna to try to start honoring some of those requests so that we can do more uh, a personalized interview with some of you, so. So last question. On the shotgun the ammunition, were they also purchased in Nevada or in California? And the other thing is, I'm very confused about the Instagram account has been out for days now, and a lot of speculation on whether he was driven by some type of white power ideology. Is there any clarification that we can get, especially if you don't think he was targeting protected classes this, this far? The shotgun was purchased also in Nevada. Um, and as far as the ideology and the accounts, uh, I'm not prepared to do that because that's one source of information, but we have so many different sources of information and they don't all align. But is it linked to him or presumption of yes, yes, it was his account or was it a dummy account? Do you believe it was linked to him? You know, I, I really don't know. I have heard that as a rumor. I, I, I can't confirm that yet. Do you know who deleted it? I'm sorry? Do you know who deleted that Instagram account? I do not. Was the victim killed, killed on the scene? Yeah. So, last, last yeah. question. Yeah. Was the victim killed on the scene or did he, was he ever transported to the hospital? Uh, my understanding is that two of the victims... Uh, uh, the, no, I mean the suspect. Oh, the suspect. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, he was, he was killed at the scene. He was not transported to a hospital. And is his family so. being cooperative in this investigation? So, uh, as the chief said, uh, and I mentioned at the beginning, our, our goal is to get you information as quick as we can possibly get it to you. Um, the next, next press conference, with that said, is scheduled for Thursday at the same time at 4 p.m., same location. Um, if anything occurs between now and the Thursday press conference, we will be sure to get that information out um, and we'll continue to have uh, the media line available to you. Thank you all for coming.